Hello and welcome to another video from Fly DFI. Uh, we're still talking about the uh, Bendix King KLN89. In our case, it's not B, it's simply a KLN89. And the difference is, uh, without the B, the uh, GPS will not be able to do IFR work like shooting uh, approaches, but it'll do everything else. Now, this time we're talking about the active chapter. Remember these labels or chapters, and you know which chapter you're on by two things. Above the chapter, there's a little dash that moves left and right by changing the big knob. And also, it is confirmed right here. It says you're on active chapter, page number one, and I can turn the inner knob to go from page to page. And sometimes the active points have one or two pages, and sometimes it has more. Now, for the video on active waypoint to make sense, let's talk about the flight plan, because active means active flight plan waypoints. Let's take a peek at the active flight plan by turning one to the flight plan, and right off the bat, the flight plan zero, which is the active flight plan, is displayed. This is compared to flight plan one, and so on and so forth. Anything above zero is a stored flight plan. Flight plan zero is a special flight plan, which is the active. In this case, we have put in flight fl from KJYO, which is Leesburg, Virginia. And from there, we're going to Jason, which is an intersection. And again, uh, after that, we're going to uh, Winchester, Virginia, as our final destination. Now, now that we know what waypoints we have in the uh, flight plan, I'll go back to active to let you see what things you can do with the active points. Uh, one scenario is uh, you want to uh, get more information about that active point. And I would just use the big knob and turn to the left to active. And notice the first thing it does, it's smart enough to let you know that the active point that you're flying to at this point is displayed on the first page, assuming that that's the one you want to get info on. And what we're reading on this page is a lot of information. Right off the bat, this little arrow here tells me uh, that we are flying currently towards that intersection. The number here tells me that Jason is the second waypoint in my active flight plan. And of course, this is the name of the intersection. And I know it's an intersection because of the letter I. Now, it also tells you the absolute uh, latitude and longitude position of it. So it says the northern coordinates and the western coordinates. Those that have uh, the ability to interpret those, that's great. I don't. So I go on to the next line and it tells me I am, uh, or Jason, is 14.6 nautical miles. Uh, you can reach it on 2772. And knowing my flying region, I know Jason is correct because it's 14.6 away from Leesburg on the 277 bearing 2. Now, that's just page 1, and I will then use the inner knob, the small one, and turn to the right. And on page 2, it tells me more about Jason intersection. It gives me a reference point to let me know uh, where I am in relationship to the closest VOR. In this case, the closest VOR to Jason is Martinsburg, MRB, and says reference to a VOR, MRB. <clears throat> and it tells me Jason is, uh, lie, Jason lies on the uh, radial 189.7 from Martinsburg. 
and the distance between Martinsburg and Jason is 19.5 nautical miles. And this information does not change. This is the relationship between two fixed points, the Jason intersection and the MRBVOR. Now, if I want to go more to the right, I use the inner knob and turn to the right. Whoops, that's all I have, just two pages. Now, compare this to a, a waypoint that happened to be an airport. Now, where are we going to, where are we going to get a waypoint uh, that is an airport. Remember, in our flight plan, we have a destination, Airport Winchester. So how do we get to it from active uh, chapter? We simply use the third function in the uh, knobs. The big one, the outer knob, goes from chapter to chapter. The inner one goes from page to page. However, if you gently pull this knob out, and you can feel it when it pulls out, and turn it, notice now, it's instead of going from page to page, now it's going to go from waypoint to waypoint, which is called scanning. I will now turn to the right, and there is KOKV, and it is the third point in my uh, flight plan. If I continue doing this, there is Leesburg, which is my original point, which is point number one in my flight plan. So you can see the whole flight plan as represented in active if I pull the knob out. Now let's assume this is where I want to go, which is I need information on KOKV. Now I will push the inner knob back in, and now when I turn it, it goes from page to page. It does remain on that same waypoint, but now it gives me page to page. So let's go for page one. And this should be very familiar to you if you had already watched the chapter on airports. This is very similar to the airports information provided under this chapter, airport. So two things you can be possibly looking at this, other than looking at the elevation and looking at the location of the airport and uh, how to get to it, uh, which radial and what distance and so on and so forth, uh, you can tell the uh, uh, runways, uh, it has a runway 14 and 32 at a 5,498 feet, and it's hard surface. But more importantly, I use it very often to get the frequencies as I approach that airport. Here is the uh, clearance delivery, here's a Unicom, here's the CTAF, and notice this page number 5 that has the radio frequencies has a plus sign to it, meaning there are more radio frequencies than can fit on one page. So if I turn the knob to the right, I see the other frequencies, including approach and departure. And the last one, still on page number five, the weather frequency, which is AWAS at Winchester. And I can just simply plug those numbers into my radio and get info as needed. Now, if I keep turning, I go to page number six, and this is a page where you can put remarks. It's up to you. But more importantly, if I go to the right again, notice that it goes from six to one. And those of you that have KLN 89B were wondering what happened to the seventh and eighth page. Like I said, this KLN is KLN 89. does not have the B extension on it. So it does not have the capability to shoot approaches. Hence, the pages 7 and 8, where, where the SIDS, STARS, and approaches, RNAV approaches, or GPS approaches, are not active. So unfortunately, I can't demo it on this machine. I might do a video in the plane itself, 663 Sierra Pup at Leesburg, to uh, demo the uh, six, uh, seventh and eighth page. But more importantly now, to continue with what we have, let's say you, you've been asked by your instructor or you just happen to want to go to Winchester directly uh, and uh, want to take advantage of the capability. So what we've done, we went from uh, navigation or flight plan to active. We scanned through the different pages. We pulled the knob out. We found the different waypoints. Once we, find that, once we found the waypoints that we are looking for, we figured out or we uh, jotted down the frequencies and then 
To activate the direct tool, you simply say, this is the airport, looks good. This is the direct button. I want to go directly to KLKV, and it says, are you sure? Click enter if you are, and you hit enter. And now, notice the change from JSON to KOKV, and it also tells you, hey, hey, you want to go to uh, Winchester? Great. Now set your course to 289, right? It used to be 277, now 289. And that, of course, is shown here. So in the plane, you will see your destination uh, to uh, Winchester KOKV, and it gives you a direct uh, right on uh, course, meaning desired track, 289. So you set your uh, uh, heading direction, uh, heading indicator to 289, and fly uh, to it for 27.7 nautical miles. In the plane, this field will be populated with your actual flight. And you can use these two to make sure they are equal which ensures that you are going in the right direction. If not, you have to adjust your headings. And at the bottom here, I'll tell you uh, how many minutes it'll take you to get there. So back to active. Uh, and that's basically uh, it in terms of capabilities under the active chapter. Uh, it's beautiful. It allows you to get to the active points within your flight plans at ease, get information on it, and all of that without manipulating your flight plans. But if you do manipulate it, if you do want to manipulate it and go directly to a specific point, you can pin that down, display it on the screen, uh, and then hit direct to. One last note. Notice because we did direct to now, uh, KOKV has this little arrow in front of it, meaning we are flying to KOKV. And to confirm that, I'm going to go to my flat plan using the big knob, go to the right. And my flat plan, uh, flight plan confirms to me that we are going from where we happen to be uh, uh, to uh, Winchester. And this little arrow tells me all about it. All of that is confirmed, of course, on the left-hand side, which is permanently displayed as you go from page to page. 27.7 nautical miles to get there. Uh, KOKV is the destination, and you are in the leg mode, and you're looking at flight plan number zero, which is the active flight plan. And that is your message uh, point. Navigation also helps. If I turn from navigation page one, let's go to page two, and go page three, and voila, page four. And here's my navigation moving map. Notice that it bypasses, let's, let's do a clear on this right quick. Notice it, that it bypasses JSON, and it makes a direct line from Leesburg to Winchester. For more on navigation, please see my other video on navigation. As always, I thank you for watching, and I appreciate feedback, and very important for me, to continue this, I appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Have a great day.